JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a very popular way of representing data via a web service, or we might call a RESTful web service, in that RESTful, a REST API is one that does representational state transfer. So what happens with a REST API is our Python application can send a request for data. We're going to create an application that requests weather data from a website for a particular city. The API retrieves that data from a database and then formats it, or what we call serializes it, into a JSON data string or stream that is sent to our application. And we can then use the loads method to handle that stream as a Python object. Now notice I have a, the word loads there has an S in red. There is loads and there is load. And the loads, think of the S as standing for a stream or a string. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll look at how to load a data file that's local on our hard drive rather than from the web. And there we would just use the load method without the S. So that's how an API works in the cloud uh, as far as sending JSON data uh, to our application. We're going to use a web service called Open Weather. It's a free web service, but you're going to have to subscribe to it in order to be able to use it. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, the, the URL is openweathermap.org. And there's a reference here to the API. So I'm going to click API. And you see there are various APIs. We can get the current weather data. We can get an hourly forecast. We can do it all in one, but you can get daily forecast for 16 days. Some of these are, you have to pay for, but the current weather data is free, as I believe the hourly forecast for four days is as well. So we can click the API doc, and so we find information on what the call is for that particular API. You're gonna need this information in terms of sending that request. And notice we're going to specify a city name and then an API key. And the API key is going to be your individual API key that you're going to subscribe to to get. Again, it's free. But then the parameters of what you can send it, it gives some information here. And there's different ways you can do by city ID. We're going to do it just by city name. You can do it by geographic coordinates, by zip code. And we're going to scroll down here to the bottom because then you can see what the JSON data will look like. And for the city, it's going to show us the coordinates as far as longitude and latitude, the weather, um, just a little description, and then the various stations. We're going to use the main station. And here's showing the temperature. Now it looks like a really hot day. Um, that's in Kelvin. So we're going to specify this as Fahrenheit or Imperial format. Get the visibility. That's uh, would be in meters in this case, I believe. Uh, the wind speed, the degrees from north. So 350 is basically coming out of the north. Reference to the clouds. Uh, some information about the location, including the time zone. What we're going to really be concerned about is the temperature. By the way, in the main, you see these, you see the temperature. There's also f the temperature that it feels like based on wind chill uh, and humidity the low and the high temperature, the pressure, and the humidity. So that's the information that's going to come to us in that format. We're going to extract that data, we could call parsing that data, into a format that we want. Now I'm going to go back here. Then there's the subscribe button. And to subscribe, you're going to sign up for the free Get API. And once you put in your information, it's going to email you a key. And you have a very long key. You're going to copy that and use that in your code. All right, let's take a look at the application and then I'll show you the code for the application. So here's the application that I wrote to pull the data from openweathermap.org. And we can put in a city and type in Phoenix. And it shows us the current weather for Phoenix at Sunday, November 29th. And it's using that percent C, so we get the time between the date and the year. And then the temperature is 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Feels like it's 60. Clear sky. Winds are three miles per hour out of the west-northwest 
at 293 degrees. Humidity is 18%. The high today was 70 and the low is 64. Let's try New Orleans. So there's the temperature for New Orleans. Let's see what it is in Paris. Paris is 35 degrees, much colder. And let's go down under to Australia. In Australia, it's 72 degrees. Of course, it's summer down there right now. And um, they have scattered clouds. Can look at Flagstaff. Tucson. Even smaller cities like Sholo. Now, Sholo only gave us the temperature and the description. It didn't give us all the data, nor did Tucson give us all the data. It was kind of surprising. But we can't get the data for Ajo, Arizona. So that's our application. Let's take a look at the code. So in the code, I'm importing JSON. I'm using that date time object to get the date and time. I'm using URL open from the URL library dot request library. And I just put a comment here that I'm using the API from weather map. Now I created a function here called def wind direction, and I'm going to pass it a number as far as the degrees. The API is going to return us the degrees from north with zero being north and 90 being east. Um, we want to be able to figure out what is the direction based on those degrees of the wind direction. I put in a reference here for a website that shows those degrees. And so that's where I got the numbers from that represent the various cardinal directions. I simply put the maximum degrees for each reference starting with the north from 11.25. 11, 11 and then I have a parallel list of the cardinal directions. And when I pass it the degree, I can go through this list and find the one that it, that it is under and then return the corresponding cardinal direction as a string. So if they put in, say, 42, or the degrees was 42, well, as we go through this list, the 42 would be this third one. That would be index 2 because it's less than 56.25. And then would the what would be returned is index 2 of compass, which would be northeast. If it was 90 degrees, it would fall here under the uh, index 4, less than 101, and index 4 would be east. And so each time through the loop, of course, I just increment the IDX as far as the value I'm looking up in that list. Then we have our main function. Now here's my API key. You want to put yours in there. Do a little print statement. And then I specified the city as Phoenix to start with, but I'm going to do while city is not equal to null. So if they enter nothing for the city, we're going to end. But as long as they're entering a city, we're going to ask them to enter a city or blank to end. And I'm going to replace any spaces with the HTML format of percent twenty. That's going to be basically an escaped character uh, in HTML. So if we looked up New Orleans, it would replace the space, so it'd be new percent twenty Orleans. Then I'm going to try. And so here is where I'm going to use that URL open. That was from the API that we saw in the documentation. A string, I'm going to, in, I'm going to concatenate city value and then concatenate a reference of the units being imperial. It's going to give us Fahrenheit and miles per hour. And then ampersand app ID equals and my API key. Now it's going to pull the API key from the variable that we set up earlier. And I'm going to put all that in as JSON data. This is a variable. I could name it anything. I could have named it Fred. And then in that structure, we're going to say source equals JSON data dot read. Now one thing I did when I first did this, before I wrote the rest of the code, I printed the source just to make sure it was working. And what I got was that. Now I copied it from the, the shell, pasted it in here, and then in, uh, 
added comments just to have a reference of what that looks like. So I can, I can figure out what are the different keys here, such as wind speed um, or temp min, temp max. I can find the keys that I want to reference out of the JSON object. But then I took it a step further. I also printed the JSON dot dumps command. Now dumps is also a stream. It's a string and what I'm going to what I'm going to dump here is the current weather and I'm going to indent by four. Now before I did that I took current weather equals JSON dot loads. That's going to take that string and create this JSON serialization. And what I got from printing that was what we saw in that documentation, which was the JSON code or JSON structure. Now it's a little bit easier to see what those key values are. And I just did that as a reference and I commented those out. So we have current weather, which has all of that data for that city that we specified in our input statement. And then we're simply going to print out. Now, here's how we, we reference those items. So I'm going to print out to the city.upper and the date time now. And I'm, going to, I'm going to use that uh, string format time, a percent C. That's one's a little funky because it's the time in between the day and the year, but it's simple to use that. Uh, then I'm going to do the temperature equals. I did a placeholder, and my placeholder is I'm going to get the integer value of current weather. That's my JSON structure, JSON object, and I want the index of main and the index of temp. Now let's see where that's coming from. So down here I have main, and main is nested with a bunch of other key uh, value pairs, one of which is temp. So that's why I used main and temp as my indexes for the current weather JSON object. And then I'm going to do the feels like, kind of the same thing, and get the integer value. And this time I'm going to use main and feels like. The next line, print, I want a description. And here I'm going to use format for the placeholder of current weather, weather. And I need an integer zero here on this one, and then the description. And the reason for that is. This is a list here because of those curly brackets. So it's element zero and then it's going to be description or I could use main. Next statement. I want to get the wind and the number of degrees of current weather. I'm going to put that into a variable called WD because that's where I'm going to use WD then to pass it into my wind direction to get the actual direction. So the next statement for printing is wind, the miles per hour. That's going to be current weather. Actually, I'm going to get the integer current weather wind speed at the number of degrees is going to be WD. And then a placeholder number two here is going to be that wind direction. And I'm going to pass it the floating value of WD. Remember, the JSON is all strings. It's all alphanumeric text. So I need to convert this to a floating value because that's what, it's, what it is expecting up here when I'm looking at these values of 11.25, 33.75. In order to do the comparison, degrees or deg needs to be a floating value. And then we're going to do the same thing for humidity. This is int current weather main humidity. And then the high and the low is current weather main temp max. Again, I'm going to get the integer value. And main current weather main temp min. Getting the integer value there. If it can't find the city, that's where the try except comes in. We'll say city data not found. City data will also, not found will also come up if, if any of these are missing, maybe for a smaller city or maybe the site is down or something that day. So that's our code to consume data from a REST API uh, of openweathermap.org. 
If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.